This lesson is about components of vectors. In the previous lessons, we've looked at what vectors are and how we define them and the different forms that vectors can take. We've also had a look at some vector operations and how we can add and subtract vectors and how we can multiply vectors by a scalar. Today, we're going to be looking at what makes up a vector. In other words, the components. So components of vectors means in, in maths, what it means in English, components means the parts that make it up. So if we look at the vector that we've got here on the screen, so we've got vector AB, we could write vector AB in terms of its form AB, okay, and we could also write that as a column vector. And so if we were to look at AB, all right, so if we want to actually I might do it again, we can go, so vector AB goes along AX and then up to XB. And that will give us our sum vector AB. And so in our X component, we're going three units across and we are going four units up. So we can write that vector as three, four. Three units across and four units up. And that would be how we define our vector. And in fact, what we've actually done is we've broken that vector up into its two components. Now, generally, when we talk about components, we, we match them up to a set of axes. We are only focusing on two-dimensional vectors at the moment. So those axes are our traditional x-axis and our y-axis. So we are going to look at breaking up vectors along those two axes. Later on, when we look at three-dimensional vectors, then we will examine what happens in the third dimension, so the z-axis but that'll come later. The good news is whatever we do in two dimensions, we just simply do the same thing, but with three dimensions, all the processes are exactly the same. Again, if we examine our X axis direction, basically if we want to move from A to B, what we say traditionally is that we're going to move three units along the X axis and then four units up the Y axis. And a little bit later on in our second video for the, this particular section, we're going to examine what this idea of a unit vector is. But to make life easy, if we are working along the x-axis, then the unit vector, in other words, the vector that equals one unit of length along that particular dimension, so if I'm going one unit along here, that's given a, given a symbol, and we call it i. Similarly, if we are going up the y-axis, and we're going one unit in length up the y-axis, then it is given the symbol j, and, it's, and they're both vectors. So we, go, we can actually then say that this particular vector is three units along the x-axis, and so the way we indicate, well, that if one unit is worth i, then this, vec this vector's component is three lots of that unit vector in that direction. And then we're going in the positive x direction, so it's positive. And similarly, when we move up along the y along the y axis, we're going four units up. And so when we say four units, instead of saying four units in the y direction, which is quite tedious, we can simply say four j. So what we've actually said here is that we are going three units in the x direction and four units in the y direction. And instead of saying the words in the x direction, we say i. And instead of saying the words in the y direction, we say j. So that's how we can describe a vector in component form. And in more, more accurately, we call it Cartesian form. Apologies for the messy writing. It's Cartesian form because it is in the Cartesian axes that we are basing our point of origin. So we have our origin point down here. And so that particular vector is three units in the i direction and four units in the j direction. Now, if we want to describe the i component just on its own, then it could be described as, as a vector or as a column vector. It is one unit in the x and zero units in the y direction. And similarly, the j unit vector is nothing in the x and one in the y. 
And so that's how we can describe them as components. Okay, and so we've got this idea now that we can actually determine a vector in terms of an X component and a Y component with I's and J's indicating the length one unit long. So we can then discover some information about that particular vector. So if we go back up to my vector up here, okay, so we said that it's vector AB. So we can discover a little bit about that. If I wanted to know what the length of that vector was. Okay, now in mathematics, instead of calling, we, we don't say the length of a vector, we call it its magnitude. So if I was to find the magnitude of that vector, have a think for a second, how might I calculate that? Hopefully you've come up with the idea of Pythagoras. Why? Well, we've created a right angle triangle. So we can quite easily calculate its length by using Pythagoras' theorem. So how do we symbolize magnitude? As you can see here, we use the absolute value symbol. Okay, so if I was to find the absolute value of vector AB, that would indicate that I'm finding its magnitude. Magnitude is simply the fancy way of saying the size, the length of the vector. And so if we remember that AB was vector three, four, Right, so if we think about that vector, it's three units across and four units up. So very simply, a quick Pythagoras, square root of three squared plus four squared. And I can find that very easily, it's five. So it has a length of five units. Okay, in a couple of videos time, we'll also look at its direction because it's, like vectors, we know that it's very important that we calculate direction when we're talking about vectors, but we'll, we'll cross that in a future video.